Hello everybody and welcome to episode number 16 of my Moncton Navigators franchise. We are here in year 4 and as you can see by our record we have been doing very good this year. In fact, uh, we are top of the league. We are number 1 in the league with a record of 41-16-5 and, and our team has been uh, pretty well rounded I guess you could say. Uh, Sanford and Lazarev here on the first line are my top two scorers. Sergachev has been having almost a Norris uh, type season here. Actually, I guess I, I actually could go check right now. Probably be some guys that are over him, but um, let's go for defenseman. Yeah, see, he's fifth, but I mean, he could have a, a, a good end to the year, but I mean... This is the level we want to see Sergachev playing at here for sure. Um, wait till I go to Moncton. Uh, so honestly, I mean, on a President's Trophy, well, not winning team, but the President's Trophy uh, hopeful, is there really much you can change at the trade deadline? And I, I outlined it in... Um, episode number 15 at the end there but uh, one of the things about the only thing that I, I would see as a bit of an issue at this point everybody's playing up to their potential even that third line who doesn't have a lot of chemistry uh, with Grunstrom and Hoglander and Velarde down here uh, they are playing really good they're all plus players the only problem that I have found uh, Cole Perfetti, Klim Costin, who's doing better, and Jesse Payarvi down here. Uh, they're not performing as, as good as they should. Uh, Perfetti is 39 points in 62 games. That's a step back. I'm not blaming it on him, but he's also a plus one. Um, Costin is a plus eight. Uh, so he's doing good. I, I believe he's on track probably for around his, his career high here. Yeah, he is. But uh, as you can see, that line was performing a lot better last year. <laughs> and um, I believe that the culprit, or if I had to upgrade one position on that line, it wouldn't be Perfetti. It wouldn't be Costin. For now, I think it would be our young Finnish winger, Jesse Payarvi. Uh, Jesse has 11 goals, 18 assists, and he's actually at this point getting outscored by our uh, fourth-line centerman in Cedric Paquette. Uh, and uh, if you look at the line in the uh, edit line screen, he definitely uh, he's definitely the, the the odd man out here. If you look at the chemistry, I mean, I'm trying to put a little less stock in a chemistry than I had, but. Uh, I mean, these guys are really doing good. Uh, this guy's one red X, but um, Sanford also has a red X here, and he he, he works fine on that line. Um, it's definitely Payarvi, the odd man out. And I'd love to keep him and put him maybe on the fourth line, but he <laughs> look at that chemistry on the third line. It's, it's ridiculously bad. Um, and uh, Hoglander, Villardi, and Grunstrom are doing good. So I definitely need some more production out of that second line. Certainly for like Perfetti, I need to, to get him some help. And uh, I thought that the best way to do so, if you looked at uh, my previous episode, would be to go after somebody that's on the team that we just played, the Philadelphia Flyers. And... Uh, well, before we go into the trade deadline screen, because it could boot me out of the trade, um, I'll just show you real quick. Um, I'll go to Philly, go down here, Philly. So they're 28, 27, and 7. They identify as sellers. I'm assuming they're not in the in the playoffs. And what they have on their team is, is they have, I mean, if we need more goal scoring, Costin can switch over to the right side, and they have literally... The best goal scorer of all time. Alex Ovechkin is literally <laughs> uh, at 902 goals, which is over, which he uh, is, he broke Wayne Gretzky's record, and he already has 74 points. 
but he is 38 years old and his potential is dropping. So I think if I could give a couple of assets to Philadelphia, it would realistically, uh, it would realistically be enough to get myself Alexander Ovechkin at 38 years old. He's he's a 90 overall right now, which is full playoff mode. Uh, he would definitely help that second line, and he is Russian, <laughs> just like uh, Klim Kostin. And, well, I guess Cole Perfetti isn't real. I had Barbashev on there before. Never mind. Never mind that I said that. <laughs> I thought I had Barbashev on that line. I was going to say it's going to be like a Russian connection or something. But you can help the young Kostin, that's for sure. And he, obviously, he's going to help Perfetti as well. Um, but I think I could realistically make a trade uh, for Ovechkin. The, the problem is that I pride myself on being somewhat realistic. And I really wanted to make sure that... Uh, I was, I was realistic, and I think that it's going to take a combination of Plus, who I just drafted, would be one of my better prospects, a first rounder, and I'll give them Jesse Payarvi, who's still only 25 years old at this point in time. Um, still only 25. He's signed on for two more years. I mean, I think that, I think that that would be the deal. Now I'm gonna. I'm going to go into the trade deadline screen. I might try to up, upgrade the uh, the defensive side of things if I have enough time. But there's not really much upgrades to be made here other than maybe that third line if I find the perfect fit for it. Um, Ghoulie's not always there. Usually it's Colton Pareko who's having another awesome season. But, uh, I mean, the priority right now is to trade away Jesse Piarvi, hopefully for Alex Ovechkin. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing here heading into the trade deadline. So without wasting any time, Appleby, and they want to give me Barbashev again. If I wanted Barbashev, I wouldn't have traded him. That is a ridiculously good deal for them. All right. So... So this screen, uh, I'm definitely going to be a buyer here. Not even a question about it. And we'll get into it right now. So, proposed trade. I'll go directly, directly to Philadelphia. Directly to Philadelphia. Ovechkin. And uh, I am going to give them Pugliarvi, Pugliarvi first, my first rounder for this year. And just that would be enough if you look at the trade values. But, I mean, I have to be realistic here. Do I give them Plus or do I give them Engren? Uh Plus is younger. I think I'll give them Plus. Uh, is that good? I think that's good. Um, yeah, I think that I think that's good enough for a, a 38 overall, 38 year old Alexander Ovechkin. So will that trade go through? Gangbusters compared to me. Well, I like to see that because that means that the trade was fair. <laughs> um, so we have a 90 overall Alex Ovechkin playing on our second line. I think I'll put him on the second line, depending. The only way I would put him on the first is if it's, it, they still keep that plus five. But uh, I will value Lazarev's development over getting Ovechkin on the first line. Um, is there anybody else I can see here who... Chris Latang. Chris Latang. What would he? Oh, he fits on defensive pairing number two, uh, three. All right. So if I take Chris Latang and I give them where is everybody? Myers. I'd like to give them probably Taze more than Myers. Myers is a hometown boy. I want to keep him around for that cup run. 
Uh, Detroit would be under the league minimum salary cap, so I'll get them to retain a bit of Latang's salary. Still not good. I can't believe we still have 17 million left in salary. That's ridiculous. Oh, still. So I have to give them somebody else. Him and JSEC. Him and JSEC. Well, I mean, I guess that won't. We might not be able to make this one go through. Uh, a young Soderblom. Is that the guy who was like really tall? That is that guy, but no, uh, I guess that, I guess it's going to be hard to get it to go through. Unless I take another one of their players. Like some guy's salary or something. Marsha so a third Furlan and Cairo for Casparitis in two seconds. No. Um Yeah, okay, so Latang probably won't work. Is there anybody else who is an upgrade for sure? I want an upgrade. Zaitsev it's eighty two. Is there no defense? No de no defenseman. Dougie Hamilton with that. Uh, there's got to be some some defenseman that I could get. Yokiharu, like a TJ Brody maybe? No, but Buffalo's probably in the hunt. I'd imagine if they want to keep all their defensemen. Calgary. My goodness, these guys have awesome defensemen. All right, so that could work. Uh, that could work. Brady Shea for one year. And I would give, oh, come on. Bennett, a Lowry. No, let me go to Carolina again. It doesn't make a lot of sense, though. I mean, at a certain extent, Parks, no, he's 86 overall already. Can I find a way to get that Latang deal to work? I mean, get that salary off the books. I wish there was an option to just give them like money. Devon Taves. Is there anybody else I can give them? Does anybody have like a decent cap hit who's not on my actual NHL team? Oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, 
Come on, let me, let me. It's like this is ridiculous. They're not going to be able to get rid of this. Way too much salary. They look like they're right on the limit here. Oh, no way. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, I am I hate this screen. I hate it so much. I hate it with a passion. Oh, I was just about to figure it out, I think. You get off the trade block. No more. I wish there was a button that, that I could say, like, stop annoying me with trades of trying to figure shit out here. If I give them... Devontae's... And I give them... JSIC and I give them where is he? Bodin and I take back they don't want any of these guys but they want to get rid of Latang so and I get Latang and two young guys who are on minimal contracts like Oh, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. I'm going to freak out. Oh, you. Oh, I can't do this trade screen bolt crap. If it does it one more time, I'm just giving up and I'll go with. I'll go with I think that I'm screwed either way because looking at that it looks like I can't even take any more salary out of them I'm all in a hurry. No, still under the minimum. Oh, they didn't retain any salary though. What a broken game. It says they're under the minimum salary cap, and it says we'd have more left than they'd have. Uh, all right, I guess we can't make that go through. Do they have any uh, options on D? Dumbo Addison. Spurgeon would have been interesting, but no. 
Nashville, do they have any options on D? They should probably have it. No, I guess they trade traded everybody away. Now I'm at like a, an hour or so left. The Islanders, they're the ones that have Dougie Hamilton. Dougie Hamilton probably doesn't fit. Top four defensive bearings. Rangers. Nick Letty. Can I take Nick Letty from them without giving up too much? For a young defensive prospect there. No. They offered me a trade. Again. I don't want that trade. Devontae's and a young prospect. Just a it's a subtle upgrade. It's not a big upgrade. For Nick Letty. Oh, that's it. No, I'm not even dealing with you, EA. I'm not even dealing with you. That's it. I'm done. All right. So Jay McCabe in a third. New York. Uh, anything interesting here? Sam Bennett went to New Jersey and Adam Lowry for Drysdale. Calgary's loading up on defensive prospects. New Jersey's looking for a push. Ryan Ellis goes to Florida. So that's not good for us. That means that they're looking at a push too. Toronto acquires, that's looking like a, a little push also. Buffalo's looking like they're, oh my goodness, yeah, okay. A lot of people seem to be gearing up here, but no trade was bigger. Shea Theodore and Mrazic, that's a good trade. No trade was bigger than Alex Ovechkin for PRV Plus and a first. And that's it. Let's hope the third line defense isn't my downfall in the playoffs. Two first and C card for Theodore and Morazic. James Reimer. Kind of feel like I didn't give up that much. How is Ovi number nine? That is ridiculous. Who is number eight? Because they're going to be giving up their... Where do I go again for that? Probably here somewhere. Jerseys. Whoever is number eight, you're giving up your jersey pretty quickly there. Nielsen. <laughs> Nielsen, you can be nine. And Ovechkin can be eight. Nielsen is nine. Ovechkin gets his eight again. How is it the costing? I'd given it to somebody else. And I'm not backing down from that. Delorier. Ovechkin. Show us the promised land. Please make my. Oh, he doesn't fit on the line. I'm tired of EA telling me that. Like it says he fits and then I get him on the team and look at this, that's ridiculous. It's not, he's not they're not even a plus three now. That's a way to screw up the team, that's what that is. EA and their fucking stupid ass game. Excuse me for the swearing. Now I'm actually angry. <laughs> it said Ovechkin fit on line two. Put him into line two and look at that. That's ridiculous. All right, so EA screws me up again. I mean, I sound like 
I sound like I'm sad that I have Alex Ovechkin on my team, which I'm really not. So let's see if, despite the chemistry, can we can we pull through here? Oh, three zero in the first period. Delorier getting his A back and getting a, a goal. Perfetti and then Lazarev on the power play. Three back to back. Lazarev again, and Caden Gooley. Did Ovechkin get anything in his? He got two assists. Not known for his passing, but getting it done anyway he knows how. All right, so let's just keep on, keep on trucking. Let's keep on real time simming. 42, 16, and five. Our next game is versus the New York Rangers here who are below 500 and we come out screaming. My goodness, Lazarev with two goals. We hunt Georgiev out of the net. Fleury's now there. And Kostin and Wright. Myers Aletti, who we tried to acquire, scores on us. And Kostin, Ovechkin. <laughs> Ovechkin, uh, not, not yet able to contribute. But nonetheless, I, I'm pretty sure he's making a difference. All right, Nashville, who's terrible this year. Can we get them? Right. Paquette, Gouli, Lazarev. Lazarev's been on fire. And Lazarev again, as, just as I say that, scores again. Lazarev's been smoking hot. Forty-four, sixteen, and five. Okay, perfect. Ovechkin on the power play. I forgot to check what power play Ovechkin was on. He got one one goal there. Anyways, he got his first goal in a Navigators uniform. Let me check. Let me check. He better be on power play of one. Better be, yeah, he is on power play one. Right, Perfetti, Kostin, Sergachev. You're telling me Lazarev isn't there? Perfetti, right, Kostin, Ovechkin, Lazarev. I'll, I'll, I'll be good with that. Five forwards, why not? And Sanford, Villardi, Grunstrom, Sergachev, and Bouchard. Sure. All right, so don't fix what's not broken. Let's keep it going. You got four wins in a row here by quite the margins too. Face off against Calgary. All day come out to the lead. Ruziska and Andres Bjork. Oh, but we tie it up. Ovechkin with two and Lazarev. Oh, and we lose it though. Bouchard and then they get three in a row. Goudreau, Mangiapan and Gove whoever that is, but, um, I mean, this team shows the potential to make comebacks here, and uh, why do we, we'll simulate against uh, Buffalo, I guess, so, Carolina, that's a shootout loss, Chicago, shootout overtime loss, come on, let's get it back on track here, did we lose to Pittsburgh? I think that was a loss to Pittsburgh. Lost to Pittsburgh, 7-4. And Ulf Hedman's back. That should help us keep the puck out of the net. Uh, Lazarev, Perfetti, Ovechkin. Curious. No. Uh, I hate it that they scratch him all the time. Nicolas Delorier. And Hedman's back. Let's put Bouchard on that line. Or do we put... Yeah, never mind. Let's put Hedman there. And let's put Nielsen and Bouchard, who match so well together. Let's do that. Vegas. It's a win in Vegas. A shootout loss in Vancouver. A win in Florida. We already clinched. I believe that's the division. So we are 
on fire. The Islanders, it's a loss. Come on, let's get some wins here. Got another loss. Another loss. Hathaway's injured now. Sprained ankle. For him, let's just... Because I know it's going to screw up all the lines if I don't do it. Just put Bode in there. Washington. 4-2 win in Washington. Colton Pareko's back. Colton Pareko. So Pareko can go there. Hedman and Bouchard. Taze and Myers. Like we had right at the start of the year. There, perfect, perfect. Montreal, oh, a 9-3 loss. Hat, oh. I don't know why I'm getting so angry. Oh, Caden Gooley, yeah, we send him down ASAP. I kind of forgot about him. Let's put the best lines here in the AHL. Except for that. Plandowski has developed nicely this year. All right, so I don't know why, but we stumble into the playoffs every year. Is there a team that can catch us? The Sharks. The Sharks actually have more wins and points than us. And the Avalanche. So let's simulate this game in Buffalo. I know I, I think I simulate Buffalo quite often, actually. First period. We ended on the power play. And 2-1. Come on. 2-2 on a goal by Shane Wright. Power play, come on. Come on. Oh, right when we pause, Klim Costin. And so let's see if the Navigators can hold on to this lead for the last couple minutes here or so. That's a look at the home jerseys. Coach. All right, let's get it done here. We need 50 wins. All right, so Perfetti wins the draw. That's Philippe Myers. Ovechkin looking good in that. Looking good in that blue and yellow. Kind of looks like Sweden's design. Is that... Oh, what a nice interception there. Perfetti gets absolutely run over. Why are they circling back like that? Lucas Raymond gets a dangerous shot off. Come on. Ovechkin. 3-2. to two. Pulling the goaltender. All right, pass it up. That Klim Kostin to Ovechkin shoots it right off his pad. I mean, the computer, how laughable can you get? Shoots it off the pad. Almost scored in their own net. 23 seconds left. Offside. Yeah, okay, they kind of did exactly what I wanted them to do. Right, win that face off. I, I haven't seen Wright win a face-off, I think, in, like, since. Are you kidding me? I was hoping that this video would be a nice positive one, but to be honest, I'm I'm kind of pissed off right now at the game, and not just kind of. Let's see them score again. How about you do that? Oh, my goodness. This is ridiculous. 
All right, Sanford, right, and Lazarev. Will you win a face-off for once? Thank you. Lazarev, no move whatsoever. What the heck was that? All right, let's see if we can win it in overtime here. Ovechkin and Perfetti on that first overtime line. Perfetti, Ovechkin, and Sergachev. What are you doing just backing up? Oh, what a beautiful play. At least you got it back. And Ovechkin in real life would have absolutely handled that with no problem. But Ovechkin in EA shoots right on the pad. All right, Reinhardt somehow still has control of that puck. Come on. Poke it. Okay, Ovechkin coming up on a two on one here. Two on one. Oh, what a terrible play. Shane Wright. Why would you change there? That. Oh, my goodness. I was going to say. Reinhardt, come on, right? Use that speed. You could have just. I thought the computer was going to do its job, but clearly the computer has decided to make me lose. Velarde and Sanford. All right, Sanford gets it. Who's 55? Oh, that's Pareko. Pareko blocks it. Thank God for Pareko. A minute left. All right, poke it loose and what a shot. What a blistering shot. Oh, Vetchkin almost got it though. Right and Lazarev. All right, right win the face off, right to Bouchard, pass to Lazarev. No. Oh, had a lot of room on that glove side. they were going to win on that, I was going to lose my mind. All right, so shootout. Let's look at the shootout. Eichel. Save Markstrom. Ovechkin. What was that? Reinhardt. Stop by Markstrom. We need a goal here. Who's next? Lazarev. There it is. That was a nice goal. All right. So Lazarev gets it done. Can we get this? Can we get the stop here and get our must, our deserved win? Heroes. We almost lost to a team who was heroes shooting in clutch in clutch uh, time. Should have won that game in regulation but we win it in over in shootout nonetheless so that's our 50th win of the season now I think we might have lost our president's trophy bid but so 108 points looks like we clinched our conference with that win oh the Sharks already have played 82 games and the Stars have played I think we might have the president's trophy guys 
but we can secure it with a, a win against PRV and the Philadelphia Flyers. Watch PRV score a goal to ruin my dreams. The bottom six getting it done. Grunstrom and Bodin. Sanford. And let's see. Sanheim. Of course, Faraby. I'm calling it right now. Payarvi's going to tie it. Ovechkin. Oh my God, what did I just say? What did I just say? This game is absolutely ridiculous. 35 shots to 23, but they get six on Montombo. Payarvi ties the game just like I predicted. And the Philadelphia Flyers might have ruined our shot at the President's Trophy. Let's see. Penguins of 104. I believe the the Sharks weren't going to beat us. The other the, the one team that would beat us would be the Stars, but they lost also. So we did win the President's Trophy. Despite EA not wanting us to. And we have finished in first place in the NHL in year number four. Now let's check out. Lazarev at 40 and 40 this year. So 80 points in 78 games. Ovechkin with 98, but a lot of them weren't with us. How many points did he score with us on that second line? He was a plus six, 24 points in 20 games. I mean, that... That's a deal worth making. Sanford, 71 points. Wright, for his first season, has 62 points in 77 games. Perfetti definitely played better with Ovechkin, I believe. I'd like to see the splits, but he his plus-minus improved. Uh, 60 points. Looks like he played better. Did he, ta he did take a step back from last year, 74, but, I mean, whatever. Sergachev kind of cooled down. Uh, Costin with 50 points, plus 10. Grunstrom, Hoglander. I mean, they had a solid year on line number three there. Velarde, Paquette, Hathaway, and Delorier had a good year. Ulf Hedman had a decent year. Devontae's Pareiko. Too bad he missed a lot of time, but. And that's about it. Goaltenders, how did Markstrom do? I feel like he gave up. He kind of slowed down there at the end of the year. Yeah, the goalies aren't terrific, but whatever. All right, so let's see if we advance a couple of days here. Who are we going to play in the first round of the NHL playoffs? The Philadelphia. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. We're playing the Philadelphia Flyers. All right. So they ended up making the playoffs after trading away Alex Ovechkin, their leading goal scorer. And let's see. They have PRV on the first line with Couturier and Nyquist. That must be a nightmare because that's two snipers and a two way forward, I believe. Unless he's a playmaker. No, he's a two way forward. PRV, Couturier, Nyquist. I mean, our line is better than that. Uh, Konechny, Hayes, and Morgan Frost. Our second line is definitely better than that. Uh, Faraby, Patrick, Bunneman. That's about the only one that could compare to us, but we're still better. Eight, we have an 84, an 83, and an 81. And their fourth line is Jeff Carter, Ratcliffe, and Callie Yarncrook. So is that two snipers on the two snipers on the fourth line? I like ours better. I like the grind line better. And defensively, we have a better defenseman than Provorov, and we have a better partner for him in Pariko, and we have better depth. They have Jonathan Taze play, <laughs> playing as a sixth defenseman. Uh, okay. So I'd say, and look at this. This is ridiculous. They have, so they basically have nobody in the net. They have Nikolishin and Nokalainen. 69 and a 63 overall goaltender. If I lose this series, I'll be quite upset. 
We have Lazarev right Sanford. Cost and Perfect. That, that our second line is going to dominate theirs. Our third line is going to come close, but bun him in on that third line. I mean, if they had Taze up there, they have to have injuries. They they have to. And I mean, Bouchard and Hedman. We have an 87 and an 86 technically on the second line. They have to have some type of injury. So we have a clean bill of health. How about the Flyers? They have Carter Hart. Okay, so he's he's done for he's done for for this series at least. And Tanev is looking like a head injury, so I'm not assuming that he'll he'll be back either. Um, so I'd say we definitely have the upper hand, even though they just beat us six to four. It wasn't against Markstrom, but once again the Moncton Navigators go in stumbling in the playoffs. We were four and six in our last ten games. We still won the President's Trophy. Uh, we got clobbered by Montreal here, um, so I'm not super confident to be honest with you heading in here. But we are the number one seed. Other series you can see them there. So Moncton, Philly, Toronto versus Florida. Penguins versus the Lightning and Carolina versus New Jersey. The Sharks and the Ducks. The Canucks and Oilers. Stars and Jets and Avalanche and the Blues. Those are the playoff series. I think we have a realistic shot at the Stanley Cup here. And um, I definitely see some in our future if we don't get some now. So, Sergachev went up. Ovechkin's going down, which is why I justified trading for him. I think it makes a lot of sense. I really do. He probably went down in anything. He went up in statistical growth, but went down in natural growth quite a bit. Well, I mean, he's going down, but he's still keeping, yeah. Lazarev went up quite a bit. I hope I'm hoping he gets a massive jump here. Costin, uh, Perfetti is going up. Sanford, Pareko, Shane Wright. His is natural growth too, which is better. What was he in '98? In he had '98 and something. '98 and durability. He won't get injured. That's good. Ulf Hedman. Grunstrom going up. Hoglander went up. Deloria is going down. We'll have to find another grinder probably in the offseason for that th uh, third line. Um, all right. So I don't think I forgot anything. <laughs> uh, I think I checked everything. Um, so that's it uh, for this episode. This has been episode number 16. Uh, hopefully we can beat uh, Philadelphia in the first round here. Uh, they did beat us in the last game of the season, but we clearly have a better team. What are we doing in the AHL here? All right, so Halifax, uh, I mean, I guess the Americans have a better record, but uh, I'd see them doing pretty good. I'm hoping Appleby, did Appleby go up any? Fonstad was your leading scorer. Gratton finally getting some good stats. He's a 74. I don't think he'll... I don't know. I might be wrong. Van de Sample, 79 overall. I hope he's going up some. McCoshin, Gooley. Was that in the NHL? Five games? No, must have been the playoffs. He did have six points in 11 games with, in the NHL. Um... All right, so that's that. And now I wanted to see the goaltenders. Appleby had a, a pretty good, oh, a really good season, excuse me. Nine, uh, two, 24 goals against average. And Nykvist even had a, an awesome season. So, And he's up to 78, so he'll be ready. I mean, I, we can move on from Montombo in the offseason. Jalen Appleby will definitely be ready. I might give him a year under Markstrom. Uh, to condition him for the NHL. I don't know what's better, if he's a backup goaltender in the NHL or if he's a starting goalie in the AHL. 
he'll see some NHL time anyways, that's for sure. And um, so that's the end of the episode. Next episode, episode 17, will be our playoff series against the Philadelphia Flyers. Till next time, this has been East Coast Gaming. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. Definitely love the comments, so keep those coming. And uh, we're going for the cup. We're, we're definitely going for the cup here. Uh, we have a cup team, and I think that uh, we'll get it done. I think we have a good chance of getting it done. And it starts with Philadelphia. So until next time, see ya. And uh, keep your eyes open for that next episode.